Welcome back to Fallout 1.5 Resurrection. We've got someone who's going to give us some insider information on when we can get a good drop on Anonym and hopefully take them out. But before that, we've got to relay the information to Advisor Elisa. Have you spoken to the informant? I'd like to know if all this grief brought some results at least. Relax. He told me what we needed to know. Anonym's secret hideout is located in a cellar beneath a certain abandoned house in the dead quarter. He and his accomplices supposedly regularly meet there in secret. The informant doesn't know the time of their next meeting yet, but as soon as he finds out, he'll contact you directly. I think we can rely on it. Good work. You can collect your well-earned payment from the supply officer. I'll try to let you know as soon as the informant's report's in. I see you have an older model of Pip-Boy. Is this still functional? As far as I know, yes. Why? Excellent. They'll save us a lot of time. I can send a message to it when I know the time of Anonym's next meeting. But first, you'll have to connect it to the Imperial Network. All you need to do is enter the password, Theodore, into any free terminal here in the palace. A Pip-Boy connector will extend from it, so just connect your Pip-Boy and the computer will take care of the rest. The range of our network is limited to a small area around the city, so try to stay nearby. It won't reach you outside Albuquerque. Gotcha. Okay. Theodore. Theodore. So any free terminal. Such as any one of these, probably. Oh, sorry, that's your computer. <clears throat> uh, maybe this one. Here we go. The computer screen shows a Vault Tech logo and a command line where you'll have to enter a password to gain full access. Enter the password Theodore. Let's see, cover a small compartment opens on the side of the console and a Pip-Boy connector extends from it. Let's connect our Pip-Boy. Connection detected, verifying, unregistered Pip-Boy, preparing to register, address assigned, Pip-Boy registered to network. You are about to disconnect your Pip-Boy, but the computer starts another process. Synchronizing, copying freely available annual documents, operation successful, document count 1, creating backups of documents from device, error and sufficient permission, details, copying forbidden by protocol vault tech BRC New Mexico, synchronization over, please disconnect device. Hmm, looks like my Pip-Boy isn't fully cooperating, but I managed to download one holodisc anyway. It's not there. Um, archives, right? Uh, this? Or is that the very... No, that's the intro. I managed to download a holodisc? Where is it? Ah, here. The Empire's Greatest Tales. <clears throat> Let me take a sip of my tea first. This looks like a big one. Advisor Beldir Harding Stilson, written on the occasion of Emperor Misrael's 60th birthday, July 31st, 2167. 2167, so that was three years ago. The history of the Empire and its dwellers contains many great stories that should never be forgotten. Each affected the development of the monarchy. Each bears an important message. But three of these stories stand out because their impact on the Empire was unmeasurable. In fact, the existence of the Empire would not be possible without them. That's why each of us must take these three tales to heart, so that their memory may be preserved forever. The schism at the beginning of life in Vault 16, when living on, uh, living on the surface became impossible... Oh wait, the Oh, that's the title, isn't it? That, <laughs> that is the title, it looked like part of the sentence. Okay, the schism at the beginning of life in Vault 16. Or is it Sizem? Schism? Ah, whatever. When living on the surface becomes impossible, the ancestors of today's Imperial Dwellers descended into a vault numbered 16. That way, they saved themselves from the radioactive fallout and were given the opportunity to repopulate the Earth again in the future. However, 
that hope could have been lost because of a great dispute that erupted in the shelter. Because of a gross administrative error, not one, but two overseers were charged with the leadership of the vault. Elizabeth Stilson and Abraham Harding, a woman and a man, both appointed to the same office. Each of them supported by their subordinates and a large part of ordinary people, neither willing to stand down. Conflict seemed inevitable, but the overseers were wise rulers and came up with a way to prevent unnecessary bloodshed. They decided to appease the entire vault by marrying each other. That way, they could both manage the vault. Both camps resisted their solution for a while, but in the end, they recognized its wisdom. During their wedding, they signed an agreement, and peace, welcomed with enthusiasm by everyone, had taken hold in the vault. That's how the united Harding-Stilson family came to rule, consisting of both first overseers and their closest relatives. Together, they looked after the welfare of the community, and the burden of rule was subsequently passed on to their descendants. This basic system has lasted to the present day. The Establishment of the Empire After six decades spent in the vault, the land became habitable again, and Theodore, the overseer at the time, and the grandson of the first overseers, decided it was time to resettle it. A difficult period of rebuilding began, as the dwellers had to transform the ruins of the old metropolis of Albuquerque into their new home. Many demanding tasks awaited them. They learned the practical use of old world technology, defended their emerging city from enemy attacks, and made contacts with the surrounding settlements. Overseer Theodore wisely led them and always showed them that the, the path they needed always showed them the path they needed to take. When eleven years had passed, he considered his work complete and decided to pass the rule to the people. However, they knew how much Theodore did for them, and how important it was for him to lead the city in the future as well. That's why they declined his abdication. On the contrary, they came with a proposal that would strengthen Theodore's position even more. To show their appreciation for his tremendous merits and to make sure the rule stays in the hands of his descendants, they looked at the examples from the old world, where they learned about the title of Emperor, because the powers and majesty of this position proved to be exactly what they wanted for Theodore, they decided to award that title to him. Internally, Theodore was against this, but he didn't want to oppose the will of the people. That's why he accepted the position. But he insisted that, at least, a council of three members be created that would rule together with him. That's how the Empire and the Council of Advisors were established. On the request of the Dwellers, only people from the Harding Stilson lineage are allowed to become advisors, and things have remained that way until today. The Great Ghoul Attack Theodore died five years after the formation of the Empire, and was successful, succeeded by his younger brother, Misriel. Though he's as wise and capable as his sibling, nothing could have prepared him for what was to come. During the second year of his rule, on the night of February 6, 2155, the Empire was attacked by a huge number of disciplined ghouls armed to the teeth, bent on ransacking it completely. Despite the surprise of their attack, the Imperial Army was able to quickly organize itself and stop the ghoul onslaught. The fierce battle lasted until dawn and claimed many lives of our, of our best and most loyal troops. The ghouls were slow to retreat at first, and tried several unsuccessful counterattacks, but their retreat soon turned into a cowardly escape, and their army fell apart completely. The Imperial Army was victorious, but because it lost many men and needed the rest for the direct uh, defense of the Imperial City, Emperor Misriel decided to negotiate a contract with a faction called the Mutant Hunters. He gave them the means to build their base in the vicinity of the Empire in return for a promise that they would dispose of the ghoul threat. Originally, they asked for much more in return for their services, from weapons to the most advanced technologies of the city. But Misrael's daft negotiating prevented that. <laughs> Sorry, I just said daft negotiating. That's deft negotiating, rather. Sadly, the hunters are not too zealous in their task. During the second ghoul attack seven years ago, they weren't even able to keep their outer defensive positions and let the enemy, and let the enemy penetrate to the gates of the Empire itself. Thankfully, our soldiers demonstrated much greater decisiveness, and at the cost of further casualties, managed to stop the ghoul army again. Then, with negligible help from the hunters, they managed to turn them back and force the ghouls to retreat. The Empire demonstrated its strength and the will to survive again. 
There can be no doubt that a great future awaits it under the wise rule of Emperor Misrael. Let me just check something real quick. Ah, okay, yeah, everything checks out. I was gonna say I thought it said there were four stories, and yet I only remember reading three, but no, it says there's three stories. I wonder what it's gonna look like when I get the message. On oh, my Pip Boy, like, is it gonna be super obvious? I sure hope so. Alright, let's go. Well, while we're waiting for the message, I think the best thing to do is probably go to the other half of the Imperial City. The one that I completely missed before because I thought it was just one of the other exits. Oh, wait, 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 Before that, I need to collect my payment, huh? Two thousand caps, thank you. Yeah, curious what's gonna be over here, and I'm also hoping that I find a place to put Catherine's daughter. Just start going door to door, I guess. No one home. Anything to loot? You really aren't from around here. I'm sure you've heard of the mutant hunters. What do you think of them? Don't worry, you can tell me the truth. It'll stay just between the two of us. Hmm. Well, I don't exactly trust this person that'll stay just between the two of us, but... Whatever. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. They're vile murderers. Killing people because of mutation is insane. Awesome. Glad to meet someone who shares my views. You may call me Cole. My surname doesn't matter. I'm in a bit of a trouble right now. Maybe you could lend a hand. With what? My body has been showing slight signs of mutation. Nothing serious, but even that was enough to make the Imperial Army come after me. They want to hand me over to the Hunters to keep the deal they have with them about the defense of the city. Alright, how can I help you? I need to get out of the Imperial City, but the soldiers have my description and check anyone who leaves. Go to my apartment and bring me my pistol and pliers. I have my tower pliers there, and I might be able to get through the fence with them. And if stealth won't do it, I'll try to fight my way out. Damn it, I want at least a chance to defend myself. Fair enough. Where's your apartment? Northwestern side of the city. Uh, my apartment is the second one from the entrance. Will you help me, then? Northwestern side of the city. Second one from the entrance. Okay. How come you have pliers like that in your home? I'm an engineer. I work with high voltages and... Hell, why am I explaining this to you? What does it matter? They're big, strong pliers with isolated handles. You'll know them when you see them. Okay. Something we should talk about. Oh, got an opinion about that? Do you not believe what Cole said about the Imperial Army going after him? It doesn't surprise me the army is trying to get their hands on him. On the other hand, the rest of it does sound like nonsense. I would really like to know what is going on here. We should not help him. But we can go look into his apartment. Maybe we'll find some answers there. Good point.
Northwest, second one from the entrance. So, this one? Wait, is this... This can't be an apartment. It's freaking huge. No, plus there's someone here. Would it be awkward if I just bust into the bathroom and try talking to this woman and her daughter? Nah. Okay, goodbye. Let me out. Oh my god, they're all in my way. Thank you. Perhaps it's this one. That is also certainly not an apartment. you want here? Who are you? And who are you? I bet you don't live here. Can't you see I'm in the Imperial Army? Private Brad Sneed, he salutes. The owner of this apartment has committed a murder. I'm standing guard here in case he comes back. Oh, this I think this is the apartment, isn't it? What exactly did he do? He got drunk and started an argument with another dweller. Then he brutally stabbed him to death. Nobody has seen him since. Hmm. Is that the truth, or just a lie? Who's lying? Can I take a look at his stuff? What? Of course not. Besides, his belongings have been confiscated. They aren't here anymore. <laughs> Fair enough. Hmm. You won't catch him by standing around, you know. The army can't spare that many soldiers to look for the murderer. Only I was tasked with guarding his apartment. We've sent his description to the restaurant, the supply office, and most importantly, the gate guard. So if he shows his face there, he's ours. We'll catch him sooner or later. Hmm. Well, if the stuff isn't here, then I guess I'm not going to find anything, right? So I might as well just spill the beans. Alright, I've talked to that man. He said you're after him because he's been showing signs of mutation. Then he lied to you. You don't mean to imply you're going to meet him again. If so, I'd recommend cooperating with me. We could catch him together. Hmm. I might meet him again. In that case, I could follow you. When you start talking, I'll sneak up to him and grab him from behind. And if he tries to escape, you'll help me catch him. We must get him, even if we have to gun him down. He's a murderer. Nothing but execution awaits him anyway. What do you say? Hmm. I mean, I want to gather more information, but I don't see any way to do it. Unless I can somehow find his confiscated stuff. But that seems doubtful. I doubt the quest goes that deep. <sighs> I'm in. I'll be a few steps behind you anywhere you go in the Imperial City. <laughs> Should you need to leave the city, just tell the gate guards about me when you return. They'll let you pass and inform me so I can start following you again. But please, don't go anywhere unless you really have to. We need to catch the murderer as soon as possible. Are you actually going to follow me? Oh, he's actually going to follow me. Yes. 
You have something to say? It seems Cole killed a dweller. You haven't heard anything about the murder? It does strike me as strange that I haven't heard anything about it. Imperial dwellers normally don't kill each other. We value life. But I haven't... I haven't been myself lately. I was occupied taking care of the inheritance left by my father, so I'm not up to date regarding the latest developments. It is also understandable that the Imperial Army is trying not to disseminate the news about one dweller killing another dweller. Nevertheless, there is no reason to distrust what Private Sneed said. It certainly makes better sense than Cole's story. Indeed. I know you said I can't search his stuff, and in fact his stuff isn't even there, but you know what? I'm gonna try anyway. He was not lying. There's nothing in there. Please, leave me alone. The last thing I need to be bothered... Uh, the last thing I need is to be bothered by some... She looks at you with disgust. Foreigner. <laughs> I'll poke your eyes out for that look. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. She pauses. No... I'm the one who should be apologizing. She's surprisingly well-mannered for someone from the outside world. My name is Lorraine Vel Velasquez. It's just that I'm too worried to be in the mood to chat. Wait, since you're not from around here, maybe you can help me. Sure. My son Felix has gone missing. I have no idea where he could be. I'm afraid something bad might have happened to him. He's only ten years old. He's the only thing that... She almost breaks into tears, but manages to stop herself. I'm sorry, you're obviously not here to listen to me whining. Let me start from the beginning. I wanted Felix to sign up in the Imperial Army. It would have been great for his future. Even he wished to join. He wanted to be like his father, even though he never knew him. The last time I've seen him was when he went to the Imperial Palace to see the recruitment officer. My little Felix. What did the officer say? Colonel Brownman said that Felix wasn't accepted, so he sent him home. But they can't be true. Felix would have come straight home. He wouldn't run away. He's not like that. And the city is safe, so what could have happened to him? He had no reason to leave it. I think the colonel knows something. I'm not saying he hurt my son, but I have a feeling he knows something about his disappearance. But he denied that, and he wouldn't tell me anything. Nobody else will help me. A colonel in our army is practically untouchable. Is a practically untouchable position. Nobody has a reason to doubt his word, but I bet he's hiding something. Christ! I hope Felix wasn't the one stabbed by Colin or whatever his name was, Cole. I really hope not. Okay, I'll try to find Felix. Thank you. Please, bring him back in one piece. I'll have a pass into the city arranged for you in my name. I don't want to lose my son, I just couldn't bear that. I wonder if she'd be willing to take in, um, Catherine's daughter. Wait, someone wanted to give me advice? Who? Probably Lystra. Uh, any idea where to look for Felix? Where can a boy get lost in the Empire? People don't disappear in the city. It's not the wasteland. It might be Felix is hiding somewhere. Admission into the Imperial Army is a great honor, even for the, for children so small. Maybe he's ashamed of returning home. Colonel Brownman has already said to Mrs. Velasquez that he knows nothing, but he might recollect something new. I have no idea where else to start searching. What can you tell me about Colonel Brownman? Not much. I don't know him personally. I know he was wounded in the battles with the Rebirth during their second large attack on Albuquerque. He was entrusted with recruitment on account of his injuries and his speckless records. I have no doubt he took up the task with great responsibility. He is an officer of the Imperial Army. There's no reason to doubt him. Oh, isn't that person... Uh, that's that asshole I talked to, right? 
who was seemed nice but was all like super high and mighty and had a massive ego. Okay. Well, they're in the other city, so I'll stick with this one for now. I guess let's just go do the murderer thing. Is he still there? Yeah, still there. Alright, where's the guard? There you are. Why is Woofer behind my guard? Well, how did- Fuck! You ratted me out! Bastard! Oh, no you don't! Oh! Oh, shit. I was supposed to shoot him, wasn't I? He just disappears into nothingness? What? Uh... Damn it! You won't be much help now. I doubt he'd dare show his face in public in daylight anymore. Well, if you happen to learn anything new after all, I'll be in his apartment again. Okay. It makes it sound like I can still complete the quest. Can I? Like, is it actually a proper quest and it's not, like, failed or anything? Not that one. Yeah, help the soldiers catch coal. Alright, I guess I can maybe still complete it. Obviously he's somewhere inside here, and he, I think, went into the other half of the city, so I guess there couldn't be that many places he could be, right? Check out this place. Oh, it's a restaurant. Oh, they can't feed foreigners, apparently. Lystra. Is this Felix? I don't know you. Why are you bothering me? Did you come to see my idiotic parents? They're home just so that they could yell at me the whole day. Oh, I guess that isn't Felix. Uh, just taking a look around, what's your name? Mario Carbone. Oh, that's the one everybody keeps talking about. They keep saying car that Carbone, Carbone boy is so, like, rude or something. And now get lost, I don't want to talk to you. Being stuck at home is bad enough. Stupid parents. Why don't you like your parents? They want to send me into the army. My old man came up with that crap. Said it'd be a great career. <laughs> and my mother won't help me. Says it would make me stop doing... Mischief like I did last month. What a load of shit. Isn't it enough that I'm grounded because of that? <laughs> Kill them. <laughs> Kill your parents. <laughs> uh, what did you do last month? My former friends didn't believe me when I said I could pick their pockets without them noticing. So I showed them. When they found out they were missing a few things, they made a lot of fuss and told their parents that I robbed them. Damn crybabies. Mother started screaming like crazy and father beat me up. I hope they die. Aren't you a bit too young for the army? Stupid Imperial Army accepts recruits of my age. 
It's because they need someone to boss around so they could feel better about themselves. I know a few boys and even one girl who were sent there. Now they're mindless zombies. My dumbass parents probably just want to get rid of me. Want me to get killed by some disgusting mutants or a brain-dead tribal. Almost when I say kill them, just to see what happens. I hope I don't regret this. Kill them. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Oh my god, I'm actually gonna do this? Is this actually gonna happen? Is he actually gonna kill his parents? Let's just see what this says. Are you going to just let them keep pissing you off? Let them destroy your life? Never let you do anything fun? And in the end, send you into the army? Or somewhere where you'll just get killed? You have no other choice. It's practically self-defense. Jesus Christ. I... I shouldn't do that, right? Um... I'm really curious what's going to happen. Alright, I'm going to do it. I've dreamed so many times that something terrible would happen to them, that they'd die and I'd be free of them. B but why not just kill them myself? Yeah, sounds good. But how am I supposed to do it? I'll find a pistol for you, just hold on for a bit. Oh my fucking god. You can actually do that. Oh my god. Wow. I'm gonna save it and give him a pistol. I'm definitely not gonna live with that. I don't. I don't want to do that seriously. But I am just curious what the hell is gonna happen. Oh, I need an actual pistol. Um, do you have one? Ah, oh, I don't actually have a pistol. Maybe some other time, kid. Actually, hold on, can I just talk to his parents? That'd be a simpler solution than him murdering them. Nope. Man, that is crazy. I really didn't think they'd let me to actually, like, follow through with that. Um, I think that's everywhere here. Every building? Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to the other side and speak with the recruitment officer. Where the hell is the recruitment officer? I think they're... Yeah, they're in the main building here. If I remember right. And if I don't want to get shot... Both of you have to stay here. I think it's this guy, right? Yep, Zachary Broman. What do you know about a boy called Felix Velasquez? Felix Vel- Oh no. His mother sent you, didn't she? I thought I told her that I haven't seen him after he left here. Is she accusing me of something? I understand she is worried, but I wouldn't expect that. I knew her husband for crying out loud. Okay, but don't you even have the slightest idea what could have happened to him? Anything that could help? She won't let it go, will you? Look, I can't help you. Nothing I heard can be taken seriously, and I highly doubt it has anything to do with Felix's disappearance. <laughs> so you do know something. Go on. I wouldn't feel too good spreading rumors. It could have dire consequences, you know? I don't know you, and you're a stranger, after all. I cannot be sure you would treat that information confidentially. Christ, what is going on? Okay, can I gain your trust? Oh, what the fuck? For that, we would have to know each other closer. He unexpectedly caresses your arm. Okay. Hmm. 
prefer neither sex, I can enjoy great intimacy with both men and women. To refuse one means to deprive oneself of half the experience. It is diversity that attracts me. But with you, there's a dish- okay. Anyway, um... Can I kill you now? <laughs> Can you not just pop off to the wild paradise for a moment? In my position, it would not be a wise move to seek out sexual relations with strangers publicly, not to mention with prostitutes. It could destroy the good name of the Imperial Army, and that is something I can never allow to happen. Even with all my, like, really high speech skill, I can't, like, talk my way around this. It's either screw him or just give up. Alright. Fuck you. Goodbye. Well, shit. Yeah, I really wish, uh, really wish Fallout 1.5 Resurrection gave me a lot more options to actually flex my skills like speech. Feels very limited with the amount of ways you can solve a quest. Um. Where does that leave me? What do I have to do? I know I'm still waiting for the message to deal with Anonym, but that hasn't happened. Right, well, I was trying to think of what to do, because I've hit a bunch of dead ends. There's the, the kid, Carbone, who I, I don't really want to complete this quest seriously, but even if I wanted to do it as a joke, I still need a pistol, and... Well, I can buy one, but I don't know how committed I am to trying to get the kid to murder his parents. I might just leave that one alone. Um, so there's that. There's a whole Velasquez thing, but the guy ran away. I searched the other side of the Imperial City for Cole, I think his name was. I uh, couldn't find him, which is very strange, because there's no way he actually got out of the Imperial City. He must be there. He's got to be, but couldn't find him. Um, so then I went back to the suburbs looking for the person who might be able to tell us more about where Lystra's brother is. Supposed to be some person named Falcon. I searched for them before, couldn't find them, and I... I think I maybe just found them. This is right at the tribal camp. There's this person here, who was described as like a, a young man, I think. What is it? Why are you bothering me? I've done nothing wrong. Oh, really? Why are you so agitated, then? I... That's none of your business. He looks nervously towards the tribal camp. Go away. Maybe I will. The tribals would no doubt like to know that somebody had been snooping around their camp. No, it's not like that. Wait, please, I just want to give one of them something. Nothing more. Hmm, but I don't think this is Falcon, actually. Who, exactly? It's for my Aaliyah. My girlfriend. Ex-girlfriend. I left her because I got scared. If my people f found out that I'm seeing a tribal, they'd exile me. He sighs. But I don't care about them anymore. I only care about Aaliyah now. I bought this earring from Alvarez. He shows it to you. I want to give it to her as an apology. I see. Why are you still here, then? I can't get to her. The tribals guard their camp and won't let me in. Our community isn't on the best of terms with them. I don't know what to do. I could help you if you want. I'd go and talk to Aaliyah for you. You really do that? Here. Take the earring to her. Tell her it's from Ben. You should find Aaliyah in one of the tents. You have to tell her that I'm sorry. That I was a fool and want to fix everything. That I want to leave Albuquerque with her. Go somewhere far away where we can be together. If she agrees, tell her to go to our secret spot. I'll meet her there. Dang, it's not Falcon. Alright, one of the tents, huh? Ah, this must be her. The girl's face is stained with tears, and she is still sobbing quietly. She turns her gaze away as soon as she sees you. It seems she doesn't want to talk to anyone. You must be Aaliyah. She stops crying and looks at you. I'm not going to read this dialogue. It's in quote-unquote tribal speak. Uh, here's an earring. 
She's gonna forgive him. Okay, doesn't care about them anymore. Wishes to leave Albuquerque with you if you agree. Ah, she'll go. Go to the secret spot. All right, good. She decided to give you another chance. Don't mess it up. I, you can't even imagine how grateful I am. For the rest of my life, I will be in your debt. Now, now I must go. I can't keep Aaliyah waiting. Farewell. No problem. 500 experience points. Did Ben just run off with his arms in the air? <laughs> like the freak out animation? I think he did. Let's uh, put my weapons back on too. Right, so yeah, that's cool, but that's not Falcon. Are you Falcon? That's Falcon! I never tried to talk to that person before? Fuck me. Anyway. Yeah, need anything carried across the wasteland? I'm your man. They call me Falcon. I need information about a man you took with your caravan away from here some time ago. It's possible that he was in trouble with the mutant hunters. I've no idea what you're talking about, and I don't trade with information. Sure, I'll listen to a good story or gossip from time to time, just like everyone else with the caravan. But you shouldn't believe everything people say. Mm, let's let Lystra talk to him. Falcon, I'll speak plainly and I hope you'll do the same. The reason I was asking around about you is that I want to know what happened to Sindium. It's important. Oh, so you're the inquisitive fellow I've heard about. May I know why you care so much? I'm Lystra, his sister. I have no idea why he had to leave, where he is or what happened to him. I'm worried about him. And there are certain... Th oh god, I can't read it now. Uh, he mentioned you, he was sorry he couldn't say goodbye, but he said... Um, he said he sent some... F oh god, it's going way too fast. Someone did try to contact me, unfortunately didn't manage to find him in time, at least not alive. He turns to you again. Yeah, things rarely go the way we want them to in life. Well, what do you want to know? Sindian seemed like a nice fellow to me. I've only traveled with him once, but in a caravan you have to rely on one another. You learn to be a good judge of character pretty damn quick. What happened here in Albuquerque? Why did he have to disappear? Well, he found out how mutant hunters really are and stood up to them. He, together with two other hunters, were supposed to kill an entire family of immigrants just because one of them had a small mutation. With the whole family dead, hunters would gain the rights to their property and the purity of humankind would be preserved. Probably standard procedure for the hunters. Sindian refused and killed both the other hunters to protect the family. So yeah, after that, he had a damn good reason to get the hell out of here. Good on Sindian. What happened to the family? He said they were weak, some of them ill. They couldn't have survived on the road, so Sindian sent them to his sister so she could help them and learn about what happened. Ah. And they were dead. They never made it to Lydia. Or Lyster, I mean. Where did Sindian travel to, then? To Karoth. That's where he left the caravan. Haven't seen him since. That's all I know, honest. And now I'd like to enjoy a bit of peace before my caravan sets off again. Alright, thanks for the info. Looks like we have a lead. Sindian left for Kareth. Yes, I believe what Falcon said is true. I'd like to go there as soon as possible. I don't want to postpone the journey more than is necessary. Sindian might not have stayed in Karoth, but hopefully we'll find some information about him. Perhaps someone will tell us what to do next. As far as I know, there are no mutant hunters in Karoth, so he sh wouldn't have to be in hiding there. What happened to the family that Sindian rescued? You know well how difficult it's for a stranger to get into the Empire. Which is understandable. It's not any easier to get a simple message to us. When I found out about them, it was too late. 
The sick family didn't have any other option but to seek help in the hospital. The so oh god, they just took them, took their organs, didn't they? The so-called doctors let them die because they had nothing to pay with, and then they used their organs. I don't even know what happened to the children. My brother risked his life to save those people from the hunters, unless they would die in the hospital. Things like that can really make me angry. Such injustice. I have tried to find support in the city to do something about the hospital, but they either didn't believe me or simply showed no interest. Hmm. Maybe I should do something about the hospital before I leave. As in, kill them all, I guess? And free the prisoners? I'm sorry to hear that. We leave for Karath as soon as possible. We'll see what to do next once we get there. What's your problem with the hospital, Lystra? Is it the fact that they've helped more people than all the Imperial doctors combined? What are you talking about? We treat people. Ooh, have an argument. Only your own people. When it comes to the number of treated strangers, the hospital and dead quarter is ahead of you. Yeah, also when it comes to the numbers of the people who died, you can't compare them like that. They didn't have money, so they'd probably have died anyway. That's life. Yeah? Uh, wait, you're telling me you agree with what they're doing? It's disgusting. Damn it! I'm not saying I like it. I'm just saying the doctor's got to make a living too. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know if I can do anything about the doctors, right? I mean, obviously I could just murder them all, but... Okay, they're doing horrible things, but then also there's going to be no doctors in the entire town? I'm not sure how much better that is. And it didn't seem like there was any sort of a real questy way to somehow get them to stop doing bad things but keep treating people. Seems like my only option is kill them all, or do nothing. Perhaps I'm wrong, maybe I missed a quest prompt or something in there. Okay, let me check something real quick. I want to know if, like, I don't know what triggers the message to get sent to my Pip-Boy. I don't know if it's just time. It's probably just time, so I'm just gonna like wiggle around for a couple days. And then see if I get a message about Anonym and the whole thing. Um. Again, I don't know what the message is actually gonna look like, but I don't think I got one. Well, past a couple more days and still don't see any message, so maybe it's not time that makes the message pop up. Maybe it's quest progression or something? But they did say I have to stay in the Albuquerque area to receive it, so... I must advance something in Albuquerque to make it happen. I... Yeah, never mind. <laughs> that was very good timing. Your pit bull gets your attention by suddenly starting to beep. You find out that it's a notification of an incoming message from the Empire. The informant has contacted me. It's time to finish the job you were hired for. I hope I don't have to remind you that it's a matter of utmost importance. Report to me as soon as possible. Understood. Alright, well I think this is a pretty good place to end this episode. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return I'm going to go finish that quest with Anonym. And then I'm going to talk to the monster hunters. I'm not sure where that's going to go. Certainly I'm not going to really help them do anything, but at least talk with them and see if there's any quests that I can do. And then after that, I think that'll pretty much finish up my business in Albuquerque. Uh, it'll be like two or three unfinished quests that I just don't really know how to continue, but I think I'll just leave those and after doing Anonym and the Monster Hunters, probably just head on over to Koroth. <laughs>